Hi, I'm Allie. Join me as I decorate a marquee oval form and create this evil eye necklace. If you need any materials, go ahead and look below the video in the descriptions to shop with us online. We'll put the little links there. Gather up your supplies and your bead on a board and let's get started. So to begin our Grecian evil eye, I have my marquee oval, which is going to be a pack of 10. We're just going to use one. You could do a series and do different color eyes. Or this actually idea came from the idea of doing a leaf in the center. And you'll be able to see how we're getting a little bit more detailed here and working with the center cord. And then just to show the progression, not every design is great from the start. So I started doing this eye and then realized much so I needed to switch it up. So the evil eye has two different 11 o colors, 115, and then four of my two millimeter Potomac crystal bicones in the center. I'm using that jet color. Even if you want to change up the eye color a little bit, that center eye, that would be changing up your 15s. I have my marquee oval, and I also have a size 10 needle with some white dragon thread size 6. The first thing we're going to do is to create a center line. So if you look at the eye, you're going to notice that center line of 11 O's that's going from one side to the other. After the center line of the 11 O's, we're going to go up and add some 15s in the blue color back to the center line, coming back down and adding more of our 15s. The very first thing we need to do is to knot our thread onto our form. So I'm going to take the end of my thread, and I have about four feet of thread, and I'm going to literally tie it onto the form. Now the color of thread that you use is up to you. If you're going to do green on the exterior, say you're a green eyed fan and you want to do green instead of that bright blue, you can totally turn it to green thread. I'm doing the white thread because the white beads are going to be right next to it. You saw I tied two knots. I'm going to pull nice and tightly down those and get ready to add a progression of beads onto my thread. So for the first center line of the beads, that's the one that you're picking up the most beads on first. I added onto my thread and needle eight of my 11 O in that crystal color. Then I added two 15s, 11 15s, two more 15s. So yes, total of 15, but I want you to think it about as it, as it is two 11 two, and then eight more of my 11 O seed beads as well. So the first thing we're going to do then is connect to the opposite side of our little marquee shape here. We're going to take our thread and needle over the top of the form and we're going to take it back down then through all of our beads, our 11 O's, and then out after two of our 15s. So remember I said two 11 two? That's because we're going to separate out this thread and add some more 11, 15s as well. So you want to go back through all of your eight, your eight 11 O's and back through your two 15s and out. Now it'll go a little bit to the top or the bottom. That's totally fine. We still have one more trip that we get to take down the project. From here, you are going to add 11 more 15 O's. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10, and 11. Once you have those 11 beads onto your thread and needle, you're going to go to the opposite side of where that eye starts, and you're going to sew into the first two 15 O's, as well as the next eight 11 O's. And see how there's a lot of thread showing? Don't worry about that. Give a nice tight pull. It's going to look like it's doubled up in the middle, and almost like you don't have enough space there. Oh, I went one too far. You want to come up right before your last bead. So you're coming out right before your last bead. Give a tight little pull. Make sure you don't have a ton of extra thread showing. You're going to pick up one more bead. So what this is going to do is create a Y at the end. Separate that out. Move that down. And see how that thread's on the left-hand side? We're going to pull this one to the right. Go underneath and back through that single 11 and then back down through that line of 11 O's. It's automatically going through those two 15s. That's totally fine. We just wanna create that nice little Y. That's what's gonna hold our center line there at the bottom. I'm gonna continue sewing down through the 15s. It doesn't matter if you're at the top line or the bottom line. We're gonna sew the whole way down, making sure we're not missing any beads. 
And then once you're down that whole line, once again, come out, bead number seven, and we're gonna create that Y on this side also. So kind of push that to the side, add one more bead, let it drop down there. Whatever side your thread is going towards, right or left, you wanna to go to the opposite side, taking it around the form, ducking underneath the form, and then back through that bead and through bead number one of that seven stack. At this point, I wanna give a nice tight pull and see how it's kind of down there at the bottom? Don't worry, we're going to spread it towards the top and towards the bottom of the design as we go in and add our lines in from the top to the bottom, zigzagging kind of back and forth. Once you're down out bead number one, remember that's that line of seven and then we separate it out into the Y. Once you're down bead number one, I want you to put on one more 11 out, go around the form and come back through that 11 out. Once you're through that 11 out, in some of the other fringe designs that we've done, we've gone through the next C bead. We're not doing that. What we're doing is looping around the thread. So I'm gonna go underneath my line of seed beads, make sure that thread goes between beads one and two of that line of seven, see how I'm looping it around, and comes out to the other side. That's how we get that center line of the eye to stay nice and straight. Add one more 11, go down to the form here, go behind the form, underneath and over, you're catching on the form with your thread, giving a nice tight pull. So see how that has the lines then going even across with that crystal look. From here, you're going to continue that nice straight across look. The next one we're gonna do is going to be two beads. So how do we get to the next bead? We are now, after doing that line, going to sew through bead number two in that line of seven. Coming out, I'm gonna add two beads of my crystal, bring those down next to the form, go around the form again, see I'm taking it to the top, bring my needle and thread around, back through those two beads. As I come back through those two beads then, I'm gonna look right where I need to go between beads numbers two and three now, take my thread and needle underneath the thread, almost like a brick stitch style where you're going underneath the thread. Make sure it stays between beads two and three. I put my fingernail there and just kind of hold it. Tighten it up, pull nice and tight, and that connects to that center line. So we're literally looping the thread around the center line of a couple pieces of thread that go through those beads. Add two more, go down, around the piece, back through the beads. Pushing down, anytime I do any sort of brick stitch or anything where I'm pulling the tension and want that to be correct, I kind of cover the beads, hold them in place exactly where I want them to be and pull the thread. From here then, we're going through the next bead and we're going to increase again. So we're going through the next bead here and now we're going to do three 11 O's. So we're increasing here from one to two to three and then we're gonna do two rows of three between those beads and then we're going to progress to using some of our 15s. So as you come back into the design and you have your center line, you're gonna end up with your two original Y beads, then one on each side, then two, then three, three, and three 11 O's. So as you go back into the design, the last one then between those two original blue beads that I'm finishing up right now is going to be two 15s and then two 11s. So the original two beads, remember we had two and then we had 11 and another two. I remember I said to keep them not as thinking of 15 beads, but as two 11 two. We went between those two 15s, just like we've been doing with our crystal linking back and doing two more 15s and two 11s to the top and the bottom. Now we're gonna separate and go and pull the center blue and create our iris apart. To do so, we're coming out of the first one of the top beads. So remember that 11 set, 
after going through and looping, I sewed through bead number two of those original blue two beads and then up through bead number one. Coming out bead number one, I am going to change my count to one of my 15s and then three of my 11s. So first was two, linking side by side to that. And now I have one 15 along with three 11s. Just like we did previously, link around, loop through, and then back through these beads. Now I'm gonna to stay to the top of the design and we're gonna go along the top of this iris. From here, I'm gonna sew over one and two more of my 15s. So that brings me out through bead number three in that collection of 11s. So right there, bead number three. And I'm going to decrease the amount of beads that I'm using. So I'm gonna go in and do one of my 15s and we're gonna to pull towards the top and do an 11. One more. One, oops, one 15, two 11s. Wrapping around just like we did, going around the form from the top to the bottom, whatever way you go, I'd like to be consistent. And then back through the seed beads, that line of two 11s and one 15. And then we're gonna sew through once again, two more of our 15s and exit. When I exit through two more of those 15s, we're at the middle of our iris. We're through that center bead, which would be bead number six. We're gonna add one 15 and one 11 L. To get this to sit in the center, go ahead and wrap your thread and needle around the top, just like we've been doing. Go through those beads, but then instead of going through bead number six, we're gonna skip over bead number six and we're gonna sew through seven and eight and bring our beads out. That's gonna pull that towards the top there. From here, we're gonna do our next, which again, we're downgrading now the exact same way. We're gonna fill in the middle as we do the bottom section. So here we're gonna do one of our 15s followed by one and two of our 11 OC beads. Let that wrap around. You can just kind of pull that down to the bottom there. Looping around, coming back through those two, and then going back through the next two beads. Once you're back through the next two beads, it's time to do our one C bead. Rotation here of going in, and we're mimicking, so we're gonna do here one of our 11s, followed by one, two, three, or sorry, one 15 followed by three 11s. Three, not four. Once you're looped in there, it's the exact same process now, going the whole way along the piece. So this is really catching and making that iris sit in that open section. Going through the loop then, and going back down. Once I sew through this last bead, I'm also going to sew through the first bead in that grouping of two. And just like that, we finished the top of our iris and we are ready to mimic the opposite side here, going between those two 15 OC beads and going to the top and the bottom with two 15s, one 11, and then going into the sides, doing our three 11s, three 11s, two 11s, one 11, and so forth, going back. Once you get to the end of the form, you still have the bottom of your iris to do, as well as adding in our black beads. Now, when I got down to the end of my form, it did not want to allow me enough space to put in that last bead, so I'm just not gonna put it in because I wanna make sure that it looks nice and full, not overly full. And what I'm gonna do is go down through my center line. So I'm looping around and I'm gonna go down through my center line here of my beads, wiggling my needle, getting that nice center line through. And I wanna exit, if you need to, you can kind of exit through a bead or two. And we're gonna to exit towards what was the bottom, but I'm gonna move it to the top because it's easier to work with. Pulling through that form. See where I'm popping out here. Go back 
through. Wiggle through. And down through that line of 15s as well. Now, if you have done this before, you could have, to make your life a little bit easier, gone up and around, looped through, and done the iris at one time. I felt like it was easier as a new person to go in and learn one side and then the other side. But surely go in if you would like to and do the opposite side at the same time. So now I'm out through that first 15, and I wanna do the exact same thing going up through that first bead, then pop it on out, getting ready to add my two 11s with my two 15s, two 15s first, then two 11s, or sorry, I'm at the one 11, one 15, I'm already past that, 115, three 11s, up and through. And like I said, this is really gonna open up that iris and kind of pull from one side to the other, looping around, coming back down through. Getting a nice tight pull on your thread, going in then and sewing through your next two beads. Once you're next through the next two beads, you are going to mimic what's on the opposite side. So that's 115 followed by two 11s. And after we come out here, we're gonna add our iris. So you're going around your form, back down through your beads. As you go back down through those beads and tighten that up, just like we did previously, we're gonna loop around our beads. So we're gonna work as our 15 O's are kind of the center of our thread. Get it down between your beads. Pull that nice and tight. Add your first of your two millimeter bicones in. Go down to the opposite end, the opposite side, kind of pushing that in there. And literally I'm gonna loop through that form as well. So using your thread and needle going around and looping through those 15s. Pulling that nice and tight in the direction that you need it to. Back up through your first two millimeter bead and then continuing on with your iris so up through one more bead here going in then and getting ready Oops, one more 115 followed by 111 we'll get us towards our center and once we're towards that center bead and going in through there, we're gonna go up and around, just like we did with two beads. And don't be afraid to yank on this because you really do want to pull this towards the top. So once you're here, give a tight yank on that thread. Loop your thread and needle around your form. Bring it down towards, and you're, you might be thinking, man, I have a lot of extra thread. We still have to do brick stitch around the outside. So there it lies. Go in here and sew in your two beads in the middle, one and two. Once those two beads are in the middle, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Spread open that eyes, eyes open wide. Cold play song, going in here. And then looping around the bottom form, putting that thread exactly where it needs to be. Kind of linking those in there. Go back up through the two millimeter. Notice I pinch with my fingers, making sure that tension's correct, then pulling those up into the next two beads then. Adding my next portion of the top of my iris. And the blue beads really do bring it all together. This one here was 115 followed by one two elevens. After I loop around here, coming down, I'm going to go again, wrapping around, so kind of turn to the side, wrap around, get my thread in place, add in the last of my four millimeter iris beads. So you're just playing with the thread and the location where it is between. 
pushing that last little iris bead in place, going down to the opposite side, sewing underneath that blue iris, and up through your bead then. If you can cut it on one catch, that's awesome. If you can't, don't worry about it. Just loop your thread then go back up through your iris. And then you have one little opening here to go through the next two beads. Bring your thread and needle out here. And add in one of your 11s or one of your 15s followed by two 11s. The next thing we have to do then is we're going to start right as we're on this side and filling this in, we're going to get ready to do our brick stitch. Once you get the center of your eye all finished up, you can put your 11 O C beads in the clear as well as your 15 O's off to the side. It is now time to add your blue beads around the exterior. What we're going to do is add them in a brick stitch fashion, and then we are going to put two wire guards onto each side here so it can attach it to my chain and just have a nice chain link to it. If you want to and you wanna link them together, one idea is you can also add the wire guards to the side and you can have a nice continuous, it's watching you sort of a necklace. And then remember, you can also change it up, do some leaf designs, do some different patterns. I know this looks like a dilated eye, but you can change up that pattern too. If you go in and you change up the design at all, make it into a fish, because I think it would be a really excellent fish, make sure to comment below in the uh, comments of the video. Once your thread and needle are coming out to the top here, you are going to grab two of your 11 OC beads. If you wanna make it a little bit more pronounced, you can actually do a double stacked wall or you can do eight OC beads too. I'm gonna look over one, two thread lines. So underneath the form, holding my hand there so the beads just see how they kind of sit. And we're gonna go back up through bead number two toward bead number one. Anytime you're doing brick stitch, you're adding two beads for the first round. Now it's easy. One bead, go over to the next little thread line going through, hold that bead in place, sew back up through that bead, and that bead's gonna sit right along the form. So I'm just going down the, adding a bead, going over to the next place where I think it'll fit. And you're just gonna sew this nice easy line through the form, back up through the bead. Add a bead, sew through the form, around it and back up through the bead. So this is brick stitch, and you're just gonna do brick stitch along the whole outer edge. If you want to, like I said, you can add another 11-0, you can get kind of funky on your brick stitch. I'm gonna go the whole way around, and then that's gonna be the uh, top of, bottom of the eye, and I will add my loops to the top of the eye. When you get to the corner of your marquee form, what I want you to do is add one and two beads rather than one bead at a time. Go to the opposite side of the marquee. And just like we did at the start, sew through the second bead. So just bead number two toward bead number one and use that to help you turn that corner. So you'll have just a bead on that corner and then you're proceeding as you were normally, just going in, adding that bead. If you wanna get that stop bead kind of out of the way or that starter thread, push that out of the way. You can even tie onto that now if you want. But it's tied onto the form. You're just going through. Once you're working on this and you have your brick stitch in mind, you can see I'm just kind of eyeballing where I need to go through. You need to think about where you want your wire guardians or where you want your chain connected. So to connect my chains to this, I am going to sew on these wire guards. Here looks about good. That'll be one, two, three, four up from the end. So whatever I do here, I'm gonna do on the other side as well. So it'll come out the fourth. I'm gonna add my wire guard onto my thread and needle. I'm going to come down through the other side of the wire guard, pick up another bead, leaving just a tiny bit of space because I want those blue beads right next to one another, going up, and that's it. If you wanna go in and reinforce your wire guard, you can, but that's it, so simple. Continuing on, and then as I get to that same spot on the left-hand side, I'll do that exact same thing of finishing up the beads and the thread as I progress.
once you're coming back around the edge and coming back together on the brick stitch, we're at the bottom of the pendant here. We have their jump rings here at the top, evenly separated. We are going to go in and connect those two. So I'm coming out of the top of the last bead and I'm going to go into the top of the first bead. This creates that bridge thread that links the two. Go underneath the form, back up through bead number one. So bead number one was kind of always laying on its side with brick stitch and you're brick stitching around something. You bring that back together and it's a seamless end there. You don't even see where it started and where it ended. What I'm going to do is go back into the last bead, feed my thread and needle into the design a little bit. And I am going to knot my thread off within the interior of the design because it's that white thread, the white dragon thread with these white beads. You're never going to see it. I make a little loop tie through and make the thread go through that loop once and twice, give a nice tight pull and that gets a sewer's knot. Go ahead and sew back a little bit further, burn down your original thread end and your little evil eye pendant is complete. Whether or not you wanna put it on chain or in this case, you can add a jump ring or sew on something else as well, you can do so. And then you have this pattern, which is just watching you. Thanks so much for watching this fun evil eye necklace. May all the evil be warded off by you wearing your necklace. But remember, if you need any materials, go ahead and look the below the video in the description. We'll put a little link there to our website with all of those materials listed. Also, don't forget, subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for our next inspirational design.